Good morning. This is your Stat Sensei, Mr. Spencer, talking about chi-square test of homogeneity. And this will be the uh, last of the uh, chi-square tests. We had done goodness of fit first, then independence, and now we're doing homogeneity. The homogeneity test runs very much like the test of independence. It's very similar um, as far as the way it operates. So the chi-square test of homogeneity is a hypothesis test used to compare samples this is a plural that's important because we're going to have two or more samples and it says from two or more populations with regard to a single categorical variable. So this right here is a major distinction. Multiple samples, all right, two or more. That compares with a test for independence, which is one sample over multiple variables. This is two or more samples over um, uh, over one categorical variable, right? So this is really important to note that difference. The purpose of the test is to determine whether or not the proportion is the same for all populations being compared. So the null and the alternative hypothesis for this test may be written in the sentences and should be, all right? It's always gonna be right-tailed. Um, test to see if a single variable or sample from two or more populations has the same proportion. So the proportions are the same for whatever we're comparing or the proportions are not the same for the categories, category, categories being compared. If we are running an experiment where they use the phrase random assignment, and you, you go, hey, this is a chi-squared, but I'm not sure if it's independence or if it's uh, homogeneity. If they use the word experiment or random assignment and you're going, oh, this is a chi-squared, then this will be um, almost guaranteed to be a chi-squared test or homogeneity. Our formula is the same for all the chi-squared tests, observed minus expected squared over the expected. All right. And uh, degrees of freedom are just like what we had for independence, where we had rows minus one times column minus one. Once again, the difference between a chi-square test of independence and a test of homogeneity is the design of the test. If the samples are from two or more populations and we're comparing a single variable, it's homogeneity. If the test draws from a single sample and comparing two or more variables, then we're working with independence. All right, so we'll try to point that out as we work along. Conditions, et cetera, are always, are exactly the same, so I'm not gonna spend time going over that. Uh, the distribution of the first sample and the second sample are the same. Um, and basically we're talking about the proportion, all right? And when we get to our, um, and we have the random sample and is less than 10%, all expected counts must be greater than five. They'll run exactly like the test for independence where we use the matrix. And then our conclusion, our p-value is whatever, we reject the null, there's sufficient evidence in alpha to suggest that the proportions, the distribution of the proportions of whatever it is, are the same um, or that they are not the same, all right? By the way, this is a typo, are not the same and then are the same, all right? Because we're checking to see if they are not the same. In a large city, a group of AP statistics students work together on a project to determine which group of school employees has the greatest proportion who are satisfied their jobs in independent, simple, random samples. Hey, multiple samples, multiple samples, pi squared, homogeneity. That tells me that right there. 100 teachers, 60 administrators, 45 custodians, and 55 secretaries. The number satisfied with their jobs were found to be 82, 38, 34, and 36. Is there evidence that employee 
uh, satisfaction varies by job category. So they give us a table. And we, go, we had 82 teachers that were satisfied, 38 administrators, 34 custodians, 36 secretaries. In total, we had 82 plus 100, 100 um, teachers. All right. So it always helps to have these totals because essentially we have to find the expected values. And 190 times 100 divided by the 260 will give me that. We can fill out the entire table, but instead of doing that, let's go ahead and speed ahead and calculate our expected values. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four um, rows and two columns. So our, we have four by two, and our degrees of freedom are always going to be rows minus one, so four minus one times columns minus one. So in this case, our degrees of freedom will be three. But let's go ahead and um, set this up. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go stat, edit, excuse me, I'm wrong. We're going to go second and then to the matrix button. So second followed by matrix. And we had, and we're going to press enter. And in this case, we had a four by two. So I need to change this to a four enter two enter. So I have four by two and I'm just going to overwrite what's there. So I have 82 enter and then 18 enter, 38 enter and 22 enter, 34 enter, 11 enter, 36 enter and 19 enter. So then I'm going to go ahead and run the test, which I know we haven't even done our null alternative, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. So second quit and stat test chi squared Letter C, just like when we were running a test of independence. And when I end up getting, I'm going to write this down because we'll use this in a little bit. Chi squared equals 8.707 and our P equals 0.033. So we'll come back to that and let's get our expected values. So second, and then we're going to enter the matrix. Go over to edit and we're going to drop down to B. But when I look at B, it's like, oh, it's filled in with a four by two now. And I press enter, and sure enough, it's populated and it's actually done all those calculations behind the scenes. So these are my expected values I need to check. And all of them, as it turns out, are greater than five. So we're good to go. Okay. So the proportion of satisfi satisfied employees is the same for each job type. We want to be using the word proportion. And here, the proportion of satisfied um, employees is not the same for each uh, job type. All right, our sim samples. Independent random sample that was given. They told us that we had independent simple random samples. N is less than 10%. We have to do that. Reasonable to assume that there are more than 1,000 teachers, more than 600 administrators, more than, 4, 5, more than uh, 450 custodians, and more than 550 secretaries. All right? A lot of, lot of people in education. So there's um, our N is less than 10%. We just checked our expected values were all greater than 5, and all of our um, observed data is counted data. So we write our equation, observed minus expected squared over expected. And by the way, with a chi-squared test, you need to specifically name it. So you have to write, this is a chi-squared test of homogeneity. All right, you have to do that. All right, so we only need to look, um, at, do the first two, or the first one and the last one. So 82 minus, I mean, well, that's a bad typo. These are swapped. This needs to be 82 minus 73.077, because it's observed when we observed 82, my, and it's the expected, squared over the expected. Then we have 19 minus 14.808 squared over the 14.808. We already had the 8.707 and a p-value of 0.033. Our p-value is less than alpha, so we reject the null. 
There is sufficient evidence at alpha equal 0.05 to suggest that the proportion of satisfied employees is not the same for each job type, all right? Please make sure that we're always referring back to the alternative when we write the last part. We believe that the proportion of satisfied employees is not the same for each job type. All right, thank you for watching. I uh, will do another one in the next video. See you on the next one.